Hi, John Wright here again from Wilcom. Um, this morning I'm self-isolating in my office at home. I hope everybody's coping well with their isolation wherever they are in the world. And again, I wish you the very best. Please stay safe. Um, thanks for watching these videos. Yesterday we looked at creating motives and using motives as a stamp. So, such as these flowers and the little flowers at the bottom. This morning what I'd like to do is take a look at how to create the actual motive run. So I'll just reduce this down a little and use the pan tool to push it aside. And what I want to do is select the motive runs that are in the design. Just drag them off so you can see. So we've got, you know, half a dozen, perhaps eight different motives. So we just un I'll just ungroup those. And there's another group there to ungroup. So you can see that this has come from the single motive set. It's a circle. Also from the single motive, a leaf. So you can see the different variety of motives that we've got here. Okay, so let's create a couple of motive runs and look at some of the properties. So select the tool and the properties box opens up and you've got a whole range of uh, sets to choose from. Let's just go with a single motive again and um, this cloud one. So a pick cloud. The size of that you can notice is 7.24 millimeters by 6.09 vertically with a spacing of 7.26. So now I'm going to left click and I'm holding my control key down to keep this line nice and straight. Left click once again and enter, enter. So I've entered twice and it's created my line of my running line of motives. So let's do that again, but this time we'll we'll change the size of the motive before we do the second enter. So it's click, click, and enter once. Now I can drag my mouse, move my mouse, and I'll change the size of the motive. Click. No, that's not what I want, a little smaller. Okay, so I can keep click, left clicking till I get the size that I, that I want. Once I am happy with the size, I simply hit enter again and the motive is formed. But what's happened is that they're all sitting on top of each other because the spacing didn't change. If we come back now and change the spacing to say um, 17, I'll back up there, 17 millimeters, you can see that they space themselves out and there's an even spacing between each of each of our motives. Okay, so let's slip down, uh, miss these settings here, we'll slip down to gradient size and spacing. So if I select that, you can see that the, the, the motive has been graded down in size from one end of the line to the other and it's the, the smallest size is 50% of the larger one. So the first setting we can change is that or 75, so we can select whatever minimum size we require. Um, and the gradient size and spacing has changed. So as the motive has got smaller, it's moved closer to its neighbor. The next option would be to change the gradient size only. So it's changed the size of the motive, but not the space between them. And the third option would be to change only the spacing. So the motives haven't reduced, just the spacing is reduced. So we come back to our, our gradient size and spacing. So let's grab, uh, we'll, di we'll digitize another line. And just for fun, we'll choose block 32. And this time, I will click, click, enter, enter. Then I'll select that line and change the spacing to say uh, 12 millimeters. And I'm going to reshape the motive, the line, the vector line that forms the shape. So I'm going to right click on the vector line and just drag down to make a curve. Okay, I'll drag, grab the end of it and I'll drag it in to make the curve tighter. Okay, so this setting says, keep
keep the size and the spacing constant. The second setting says when the curve gets tighter, change the size of the motive, so reduce the size of the motive, and alter the spacing. So when necessary, the spacing will change and the size of the motive will change. So you've got a smaller motive in there. So if I kept it constant, you can see they're going to overlap there. But by giving a permission to vary the size of the motive, it will reduce in tight situations. Okay, come back to our first line. The very bottom settings are, you may want to remove the first and or the last motive. Let's say you were running into a, you were close, it was a closed shape object and you had the first and last ones were overlapping, you could uh, remove either one of those. The other feature here, if I grab, actually we'll use this one here. If I grab this uh, line of motive run here and simply make it larger, so I'm not reshaping, I'm just making it larger. It's dragged the, the motives out, but I want to regenerate it so the motives remain at, at the uh, chosen size. So regenerate it. It'll just simply reduce the motive down to the required size and add motives to the line. So there's more motives on this line. I'll just do that again for you. Oh, control Z, control Z, control Z, back down to the original one. I'll drag it out of the way right click and duplicate it. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine motives there. I'll make it larger. So I've still got nine motives. I've made them larger, but I, will regen I want to regenerate it. Now I've got a lot more motives. So that's what the regenerate button does for lines of motive run. So these vector shapes are only a property of the vector line that the, that the motives are created on. So you can simply select another motive after it's all been generated. And finally for this video, let's look at column motive. So again, we select the tool from our fills toolbar. It'll bring the properties up and we select a column tool and I'll just make a simple curve with a wide wider middle actually that should have been I meant that to be a right click up here so here's a, a tip for you if I I left click there instead of right click so I hit the space select it and hit the space but it'll turn it into a curve okay let's find a motive that'll have more meaning for us I think let's say candlewick Okay, so the settings here are proportional. As the column gets narrower, change the size of the candlewick piece uh, proportionally. So we could we could say, look, the, I want the x-axis to be 50% of its natural width, which squishes them all up and opens the spacing up. Or I can keep that at 100% and change the spacing. So 100%, enter to confirm, change, change the spacing to 50% and they're going to overlap each other. Okay, so back to 100%. Alternatively, I could say, look, make them a fixed size. So, they're a fixed size, and you can see as they, on, on the a fixed X size, so that's the width of it, if I get my measure tool out and measure across the width of the candle, because you can see it's about 4.48, 4.5, so they're all about that same. I'm a bit rough with my measurements, but you'll find that they'll be exactly the same. So there's the two different methods to fill the column shape. You can either make the motive a fixed size, or you can change it proportionally so that it'll actually create more and reduce the size of the of the uh, of the motives down. And let's change from our candle wicking set to children. And uh, the little turtle or the car. 
let's go with a little turtle and the mirror motif will demonstrate what that is so it just turns it on its head so you've we've covered uh, three of the uh, different type of motives the stamp the running stitch and now the column and in the next video we'll look at uh, motive fills thanks for watching and please don't forget to send some photographs of where you live or your workplace I'd love to include them in these videos. Catch you next time.